Brahma said, O sages, O devas, listen. Now I shall explain a mode of worship than which there is no better one, and which is conducive to the achievement of all happiness and cherished desires. Getting up in the Brahma Muhurta within an hour before dawn, one shall remember Shiva accompanied by his consort, with palms joined in great devotion, and head bent down he shall offer prayers. O Lord of Devas, get up, get up. O Lord stationed in the heart, get up. O Lord of Uma, get up. Confer your auspicious blessings on the entire universe. I know what is virtuous, but I am not inclined to work it up. I know what is unrighteous, but I am unable to desist from it. O Mahadev, I do everything as prompted by you, stationed in my heart. After repeating these words of prayer and remembering the sandals of the preceptor, he shall go out in the southern direction for answering the calls of nature, cleaning the body thereafter with earth and water, and washing his hands and feet, he shall clean the teeth, Cleaning the teeth shall be completed before sunrise. He shall gargle sixteen times with so many mouthfuls of water. O celestial sages, the titis of Shashti, Navami, as well as new moon days and Sundays are forbidden for cleaning the teeth with toothbrush twigs. Bath shall be taken at a convenient time in rivers or in the house itself. No man shall take bath against the conventions of locality or the convenience of the season. Hot water bath shall be avoided on Sundays, Shraddha days, Sankranti days, at the time of eclipse, on days of great charity and fast, in holy centers, and during the days of impurity due to death or birth in the family. In the holy ponds and rivers, one shall take bath facing the east with great devotion. Oil bath shall be taken on particular days of the week according to convention in the society. If one is accustomed to take oil bath every day, or if one is using scented oil breaking the convention, it is not faulty. Otherwise, one should avoid oil bath on Shraddha days, days of eclipse, fast days, and the first day of the lunar fortnight. Except on the days of eclipse, mustard oil can be used on other days. Bath shall be taken after due consideration of the place and season duly. He shall face either the north or the east when taking bath. He shall never take bath wearing another man's clothes. He shall take bath in pure clothes and shall think of his favorite deities. If he wears another man's clothes during the night, the same are not impure. Hence, there is no harm in taking bath with those clothes on. But after taking bath, they must be washed and returned. After bath, he shall perform water libation, propitiating gods, sages, and the manes. Thereafter, washed and dried clothes shall be worn, and achaman performed again. In a clean place, Washed and smeared with cow dung, the devotee shall take his seat, O Brahmanas. The seat shall be made of wood or a cloth cover. A seat of diverse colors is conducive to the achievement of all desires. Or he can have the hide of a deer for a seat. He shall sit on it and apply tripundra with ashes. Prayers, penance, and charity shall be performed with due markings of tripundra on the forehead, for sure results. If ashes are not available, marking may be done with holy water. After marking tripundra on the forehead, the devotee shall wear rudrakshas. After daily rites are over, he shall begin the worship of Shiva. Then he shall perform achaman, sipping of water thrice with the requisite mantras, or once, saying that it is a drop of Ganga water. Rice cooked with water shall be brought for the worship of Shiva. 
Whatever other things he can bring shall also be brought and kept near. A vessel for argue with water, and scented raw rice grains shall also be brought. To complete the formalities of worship, the vessel shall be placed on the right shoulder. He shall think upon the preceptor, and ritualistically take his permission for the worship. He shall perform the rite of sankalpa, including the requisite mantras and statements about the puja, the day, month, year, etc., and the purpose of the puja, and aver his desire. He shall perform the worship of Shiva with his attendants devoutly. Showing the mystic mudra and using saffron and other materials, he shall bow to and worship Ganesh, who confers benefits a hundred thousand times and is accompanied by his consorts, Siddhi and Buddhi. He shall repeat his names, ending in the dative case, appended with Namaha and prefixed with Pranava. After craving for forgiveness of the deity, he shall be worshipped again in the company of his brother Kartikeya with great devotion, and shall be bowed to again and again. The big-bellied Ganesha, the gatekeeper of the Lord, shall be worshipped. Goddess Sati, Girija, shall be worshipped then. After worshipping Shiva with sandalwood paste, saffron, incense, various lamps and food offerings of different sorts, he shall bow down again. In the house the linga shall be made of clay, silver or any other metal, or mercury. It shall be bowed to with devotion. If that is worshipped, all deities are worshipped. If the linga is made of clay, it shall be installed duly. The householders shall perform every rite according to prescribed rules. After performing the purificatory rite of the bhutas, the installation of the idol shall be performed. If the worship is performed in the temple of Shiva, the guardians of the quarters shall be installed and worshipped. In the house, Shiva shall be worshipped by the root mantra. It is not obligatory that the gatekeeper shall be worshipped. The linga that is worshipped by me can be worshipped in the house. Everything is installed in the same. At the time of worship, the Lord shall be invoked along with his attendants and paraphernalia. But there is no hard and fast rule governing this aspect. He shall provide his own seat in the vicinity of Shiva. He shall face the north and perform the rite of Achaman, sipping water. The devotee shall wash his hands and feet and perform pranayama ten times with mula mantra. Five mystic mudras shall be shown with the hands before worship. Only after showing the mudras shall the worship be performed. The lamp shall be shown then. Homage shall be paid to the preceptor. He shall then seat himself in the yogic pose of Padma, Bhadra, Uttana, or Paryanka, whichever is convenient, and perform the rites once again. After the worship, he shall float it along with the cake. If the worship is performed in the house, these rules are not binding. Afterwards, the excellent linga shall be washed with the water from the vessel of Arga itself, after keeping all the material with a concentrated mind. The Lord shall be invoked then with the following mantra. I am invoking Shiva, the blissful and favorably disposed to the devotees. Shiva seated on the summit of Kailash, the excellent Lord of Parvati, Shambhu of the form as mentioned before, both with or without qualities, possessed of five faces, ten hands, three eyes, and the bull for banner, as white as camphor, of divine limbs, having crescent moon on the head, wearing matted hair, clad in the hide of an elephant and with the hide of the tiger as upper garment, with Vasuki and other serpents turned round his body, holding Pinaka and other weapons, having the eight siddhis, mystic accomplishments, dancing constantly in front of him, served 
by crowds of devotees crying loudly, Be victorious! Be victorious! Of unbearable sight due to excessive splendor, served by all devas, the sole refuge for all living beings, of beaming face shining like lotus and always eulogized by Vishnu and Brahma as extolled by the Vedas and sacred texts. After the meditation on Shiva along with his consort, the seat shall be arranged. Worship shall be performed with the names ending in dative case. Padya and Argya shall be offered to Shiva. After offering Achaman, the Supreme Atman, Shiva, shall be bathed with five materials, milk, curd, honey, etc. Then the offerings shall be made with great devotion, reciting the requisite Vedic mantras, or names ending in the dative case. Similarly, any desirable and desired material shall be offered to Shiva. Thereafter, the Varuna Snana rite, ceremonial ablution, shall be performed to Shiva. Sweet-smelling sandalwood paste and other unguents shall then be applied. The water poured over the deity in a continuous current shall be rendered fragrant. The water ablutions shall be made reciting Vedic mantras or the five-syllabled mantra eleven times. If so much time can be spared, then the deity shall be wiped with a cloth. Then the achaman shall be offered and cloth dedicated. Sesame seeds, barley grains, wheat, green or black gram shall then be offered to Shiva with various mantras. Then flowers shall be offered to the five-faced noble soul. Lotuses, rose, shanka and kusha flowers, daturas, mandaras grown in a wooden vessel, Holy basil leaves or bilva leaves shall be offered to each of the faces in accordance with the previous meditation or according to one's wish. By all means, Shiva, favorably disposed to his devotees, shall be worshipped with great devotion. If other flowers are not available, bilva leaves shall be used exclusively in the worship of Shiva. With the offering of bilva leaves alone, the worship shall be performed. Then, scented powders, sweet-smelling oil, etc. of various sorts shall be offered to Shiva with great joy. Then incense, gugulu, the fragrant gum resin, and aguru, the fragrant aloe wood, shall be offered. Thereafter, a lamp lighted with ghee shall be offered to Shiva. With great devotion, the rite of wiping the face shall be performed with a cloth. Argya shall be offered with the following mantra with great devotion. O Shiva, give us good features, good fame, and good enjoyment of pleasures. Taking this Argya, give us the pleasures of the world and salvation. Obeisance be to thee. Then various kinds of food offerings shall be made to Shiva. Then Achaman shall be performed immediately. Then the offering of betel leaves with all necessary adjuncts shall be made to Shiva. Artik, the rite of waving lights, shall be performed with a lamp with five wicks. The light shall be waved four times at the feet, twice in the umbilical region, once near the face and seven times over the whole body. Then the devotee shall perform meditation as stated before and repeat the mantras. The mantras shall be repeated in accordance with the knowledge, as many times as are necessary, in the manner instructed by the preceptor. The deity Shiva shall be eulogized lovingly with various hymns. Then the devotee shall circumambulate round Shiva. Then he shall perform prostration with the eight limbs touching the ground many times. He shall then offer handfuls of flowers with great devotion, repeating the following mantra. O Shiva, whatever I have done by way of worship, etc., with or without sufficient knowledge, for Shiva the great Lord, in order to secure his satisfaction, shall be fruitful by your grace. O Mridha, I belong to you. 
My vital airs are fixed in you. My mind is always concentrated in you. O Gaurisha, Lord of the goblins, be pleased with me. Those who stagger and falter on the ground are supported by the ground alone. O Lord, those who have offended you shall find you alone as their refuge. After entreaties like these, the devotee shall make offering of a handful of flowers. Then he shall bow down many times and take the ritualistic farewell. O Lord, be pleased to return to your abode along with your attendants. Please come again when I perform worship. After requesting thus many times, Shiva, who is favorably disposed to his devotees, shall be bid farewell to abide in the heart. The holy water shall then be applied over the head. O sages, thus I have entirely explained the mode of worshipping Shiva that confers worldly pleasures and salvation. What else do you wish to hear?